please like and subscribe. Let's grow NAI basketball. Thank you. Cascade Hoops Talk, bringing the world NAI basketball one podcast at a time. Hey, Cascade Hoops Talk, Billy D. Well, it's Thursday. Uh, boy, tons of basketball action last night. Uh, we'll just talk our way through it. Uh, big game in the big, some big games in the G Pack. Uh, St. Thomas uh, clinched the Sun Conference. Uh, the North Star got their tournament underway. Uh, oh, and Grace won. And uh, you know, seriously, all kinds of stuff. And then today, also, we're gonna have Carter Stoltzfus. He's a guard, point guard there at uh, at Grace College. Uh, really good guy. I enjoyed talking to him. I hope you enjoy that conversation as well. Why don't we just go ahead and kick it off and uh, see what's going on around the country last night. So Grace College, as I said, they beat St. Francis 103-79. Uh, it was Gibbs Brothers all the way. Jacob had 17, four rebounds. And then uh, Cade Gibbs had uh, 17 points, five rebounds. They're 26 and one. They're going to wrap up the regular season against uh, Mount Vernon Nazarene. That may have been the last matchup of the Malone brothers. As you know, Elijah Malone's uh, brother is a freshman there at St. Francis. I don't know. They might meet in the playoffs, uh, but a uh, little, little bit of a side note for that game last night. Also, Indiana Wesleyan, uh, they, uh, they hosted Goshen last night. They beat them 106-66. Uh, Javen Buchanan, 31.7 rebounds. I've been saying all year he's getting better every week. Uh, he's an amazing basketball player. Cademan Braunträger, 25 points, 4 rebounds. So Indiana Wesleyan now 24-3. and three. They're going to wrap up the season against or at Marion down in Indianapolis Saturday. And uh, Bethel, they fall again. Uh, they fell to uh, Spring Arbor. That game was really back and forth down the stretch. Uh, Gabe Newhoff, 24 points, six rebounds. Trey Cottingham, 23 points, two rebounds. Bethel's going to wrap up uh, their regular season against Taylor. And the way it lines out, they already know that they're going to have to go at Marion when the playoffs start uh, next Wednesday. I think that's wrong. I think they're actually 18 and eight. A couple other games in the. Marion beat Mount Vernon Nazarene. Huntington beat Taylor. Remember, uh, Zach Goodline talked about that when we interviewed him yesterday. He was talking about how he wanted to get out of that game, kind of a trap game. And that's it. We talked about the rest of those games. So taking a quick look at the standings because this is getting pretty well set. Grace is still ahead, but they still haven't locked it up. Uh, Indiana Wesleyan's only one game behind them. Huntington has locked up that third spot. Uh, Marion and Bethel are locked up. A little, I don't know it, if this is decided, this uh, very last spot, but Bethel plays Taylor. Grace plays Mount Vernon Nazarene, and that'll the outcomes of those will decide that last playoff spot. Hey, let's take a listen to Carter Stoltzfus. He's uh, Grace Lancer basketball. I've had the the uh, pleasure of meeting him several times. A uh, really nice guy, and you're going to really get to like him. Carter Stoltzfus. Cascade Hoops Talk, Billy D. Carter Stoltzfus here from uh, Grace Basketball. Thanks for taking a couple minutes, Carter. Yeah, of course. Any time to talk to you. So, Carter, you uh, you know, you're up there up north, up near the uh, Michigan border. You grew up up in Middlebury. How did you end up uh, going down to Winona Lake and playing Grace Basketball? It's... It's kind of funny. So I was a uh, senior during uh, the whole co the whole. Well, I was a junior when COVID started, and then a senior year yeah. was when like my recruitment picked up a little bit, and so not a lot of people could watch me. And Grace is like one of the lakes, like fifty minutes to an hour away from my house. So I always knew of Grace, but like they, I mean, they weren't recruiting me. And then all of a sudden, I got a Twitter direct message on and I think like it was January of my senior year and it was coach Hall said he said hey we're gonna come you watch we're gonna come watch you play and so I was like oh it's I was just it, which was interesting and then I played well and then it kind of just really picked up it was a, really just a three-month recruitment process and then actually 
committed here actually kind of pretty late for pretty late in like late April. Carter, what were a couple of things that really drew you to uh, Grace College? Uh, one, I knew I was very familiar with the level of basketball in the league. Mm-hmm. I knew that I knew I was my so my dad played at Goshen, Goshen College when he, like in the 90s. And so I knew how high level it was for not being Division One. And then I just knew I knew a couple guys on the team just for I knew a couple guys on the team. And then I knew their I knew the guys were really close to each other and they were good guys. And that was okay. one of the biggest things for me was I didn't want to. I didn't want to essentially go somewhere and you could you could win you could win but you also could not enjoy not enjoy, exactly. enjoy being around people and not enjoy being with them like I'd rather in a sense rather obviously you never want to lose but I'd rather lose with people I love being around than win with people I don't like being around. Yeah. Nope, I get Go that I, I get that 100%. I saw on the map you're pretty you grew up pretty close to Goshen and uh yeah mm-hmm. I didn't know your dad played over there though. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. That's kind of over there in the 90s. Yep. So I, I do want to talk Grace basketball, but you know your your sister Ariana, I think you pronounce it. She's kind of got you. Uh, she's got a done you up one. She was an All American at Spring Arbor. She won a national championship. Just talk about athletics in your family. Yeah, she she's definitely uh, in, for the college ranks set the standard. I mean, she won. <laughs> I mean, they, she won. I think she won. She's been to the final eight for NAI was all four or five years. And yeah. She, Won a national title her last her senior year, and then she took her fifth this year, and they got to the final four. So she's and she went to a, obviously a program that's a staple in yeah. women's soccer. But yeah, I mean, we've always been our family's always been big in athletics. All growing up, like we it just it's just been our passions. My little sister actually is going to Goshen College to oh, play wow. basketball. Yeah, and that's then pretty my, cool. And then my brother actually goes to um, IU right now, and he's probably bigger basketball fan than anybody in our family and he follows it and is understands the game really well who i played with he's actually my twin brother i played with him all growing up until college oh wow okay that's pretty so <clears throat> so athletics was a big part of your growing up and uh i know your sister was successful i didn't know you had another another uh, sister also playing basketball she's gonna play basketball at goshen or she's over there now yeah she's gonna play basketball at goshen. Oh, okay she's a senior this year but yeah it's been sports have been a pretty a big part in our lives growing up you know carter i've had the opportunity to watch you guys play wow last three years i think i've got a chance each time uh so i've seen you play a lot you're when i watch you you're you're an intense guy uh, you're a really good defender uh just talk about your game in your words what what do you bring to the court yeah well it's i think it, it could be different other teams i think the one thing i do well for this team is I, I guard really well and try to get our best players in spots to succeed. And I yeah. think what really matters is winning. And if you have guys that want to do other things that they might be able to do, but it might not be best for the team. I think that can really hurt teams and it happens a lot. And I yeah. think so my, like my role on this team is to guard is to lead, lead our guys and get guys and get guys involved and just play that part well. So then it gets easier for other guys to do the scoring, to do, all those other things. And I think each, and I think our team in general does a really good job at no one cares. Like, like Elijah Malone, who's I think the best player in the country. I think if he could go to another team and average 25 and 12, he comes here, he has, he could have 13, 13 and seven and we win. And he doesn't like, and he doesn't care. And I think that's a huge thing for us. I think, I think Ian Scott is really, really talented and he's been coming off the bench for three years and he could go be, the best player on 90% of the teams in NAI. And yeah. I think, so it's just, it's, I, I do, I try to do my role the best that I can do. And then everyone else tries to do their role the best. And I think that's kind of why our success has been where it's at. You know, you guys are, if my numbers are right, 25 and one, what's it been like being part of this Grace Lancer program the last couple of years? It's been a heck of a run. Yeah, it's really cool. I think it's, it's really cool to see the community following how much it's grown since my freshman year here. And we were, we had a good following, like we had a really good following freshman year for a small college. And then it's just grown and grown and grown, but it's been cool just to, to see the success. I don't think none of our guys really like, they don't necessarily, we don't like care about how much we've won or whatever. We're, we're all really, really competitive. So like us beating, uh, us beating Bethel or us beating 
Wesleyan or whatever is like is it's a it, like we care about it, but it's like every day in practice we're like we want to beat each other every day in practice. We're just mm-hmm. we want to win essentially every day. So it's just it's just another thing, and we don't really look at oh we have this many wins and this many losses. It's more like let's just go out and let's go like play hard and do what we do to be maybe be able to win yeah. that day, no matter if it's practice or if it's a game. You know, you mentioned the fans, but you, you got to talk about the fans there, Winona Lake, Warsaw area. They've been amazing for you, haven't they? Yeah, they have. I mean, there's been, especially this year, it's been almost every home game, no matter, even if, what surprised me the most was we were on Christmas break, and I think we played, I think it was Taylor, and it was, mm-hmm. un, it was like, it was like 90% full and there's no students here. And so wow. it's been really cool just to, just to play in front of a lot of people, which you don't get. I mean, you, you hardly get that a lot of, a lot of low major D1s, mid major D1s, you don't get the following that we're getting right now at here at Grace. Absolutely. You know, uh, Carter, I think one of the advantages you guys have is you have an incredible coaching staff, you know, Coach Moore, uh, Jordan Widener, and Stephen Halstead. They, especially uh, Jordan and Stephen, kind of work behind the scenes. Talk about what it's like to play for those guys. Yeah, it's it's awesome. I, I think the one thing I've been blessed with, even in high school, my coach in high school and now in, like, my and now coach Moore is like they it's amazing how they though like coach Moore does a really good job at delegating and letting his assistants have say and have and do the scouts and and have say in what we do and i think that especially our assistants our assistants are really really smart and they could both of them could easily could be would be really 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 good head coaches yeah i agree in in our league and in in any in, in, in any sort of level but i think it's cool just to see how the way they operate, they're always, no matter how much we've, no matter if we won, when we went on or whatever our winning streak was, like we were still trying to find ways to get like, we need to do better at this. We need to do better at that. And it's not just, no, they're never satisfied with us being where we're at. And I think that, and that, that trickles all the way down to the players is like, we know we can do, we know we can do something else better to get, to get better. And I think that's one of the best attributes of our staff is that we, that they're always trying to get better no matter if no matter if we've lost a game or won a game it's just we're always we're getting trying to get better every day yeah carter i'm going to throw a couple names at you you got some guys that are unique and unique talents on your team uh just gonna throw names at you and you talk about them jake wadding yeah he's i mean he's i, I told him the other day he's he's the heart and soul of the team he when he's like his energy like off the court the way he the way he he galvanized the locker room he's just a winning like he just makes winning plays on the court and he's just like a a really good guy off the court and he yeah. just he's he's a he's a leader he does everything the right way he doesn't complain and he just he he's he he's always building relationships with people and just he connects well with everyone and i think one of the most underrated athletes in the country ian scott yeah he's he he's actually my roommate and so i've been around him for he's been my roommate for 3 years he's yeah he's unbelievable he does he does everything well. He plays really hard. He cares about everyone. He's another guy that he could care less if he scores 20 points. He scores scores two points as long as we win. Um, and he's done a really he's done and he's done an unbelievable job. That he doesn't ever get frustrated with. He gets frustrated, but he doesn't ever say anything about playing time or mm-hmm. any of that. He just what he cares about is winning. And he's going to be as you'll see next year. He'll be you'll people will be all of a sudden be like, what in the world? How did like. <laughs> Where did he come from? He's freaky athletic, isn't he? Yeah, he's yeah he's not yeah he's 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 an undersized five, and he can he plays like he's he's about six seven. He plays like he's six ten. I mean, yeah. he's jumping. He catches. He's probably their best lob catcher. Best. He's great at finishing around the rim against bigger guys. And yeah, he's always been. Which, which growing up in Indy, he's from an Indy area. He's had to play against really good players, like high level Division one players, his whole life. So he's just used to playing against guys bigger and he's really good at using you know, you, the rim as to his advantage and stuff like that. You know, Carter, you got a tough couple tough games gonna finish the regular season. You're gonna go to Fort Wayne and play St. Francis and then you got a uh, Mount Vernon. What do the Lancers have to do to finish strong, set themselves up for the postseason? Yeah, I think I just like we practice today, just be mentally focused today and and and, and look at the scout and be pay attention to detail about what St. Francis does well. And then go go out there and just play our game and play play hard and I think the results will take care of itself. I think I don't think we're not like going in like oh we, like we have to win and we just we're just going in like we're doing 
what we've been doing a whole year and then the results will fall where they are. But that's our first our first goal of the year was to win a, the the league, to win the regular season championship and mm-hmm. We're close, but we're not there yet. No, you're not there. Just... In, uh, Indiana West isn't giving up the ship yet. Hey, nope. I got I got uh, one more question for you, Carter. You're you're going all around the country, all around the crossroads. You've been number one almost all, the whole season. Big big target on your back. What are the road crowds like? Are are the gyms stuffed when you get there? Yeah, most most of the time we've had the crowds at home and away have been really good. I mean, when we went and got our our butts whooped at Huntington. We, it was, it was pretty full. It was pretty cool to be there and just how loud it gets. And then we went, when we went to Wesley and the place was standing room only, it was really loud. It's just fun to play in those type of atmospheres, especially at the small college level. Cause when you're, when you're growing up and when you're even in high school, you think the only, you play in in Indiana, you play in front of a ton of people in high school, a ton of people. And normally if you're not a high division one, you think, Oh, I'm this, that like I can play college, like, college basketball but i'll never play in front of this many people but here it's been all of a sudden it's like there's a ton it's like you're getting as you're getting so many people play in front of every single night and it's just cool to see that and play play in front of that and i and just the the feeling of like even when the game starts and all these people are coming to watch it's just cool to cool to see yeah absolutely enjoy every minute of it carter and enjoy every second of it thank you yeah we will and Hopefully, we finish this year year strong going into the uh, conference tournament and the national tournament. Well, Carter, I appreciate you giving me a couple of minutes. I wish you a lot of luck moving forward. You got one big weekend left there in the regular season. And I wish you luck. Thank you, and I appreciate your coverage of NAI and your just helps people see what's going on from all the way out west to all the way over here. It's cool to see. Well, thank you, Carter. That's Carter yep. uh, Stoltzfus, Grace Lancer basketball. Thank you, Carter. Hey, thanks a lot to uh, Cotter Stoltzfus and Grace College uh, letting me talk to him. Uh, good guy. Really enjoyed the conversation. So let's keep going with the scores. Last night in the uh, Kansas Athletic Conference, Oklahoma Wesleyan wins again. They go to 26-1. and They beat Sterling 91-80. to Jaden Litsky, a double-double. Yeah, he's so many of them. 25-12. and Caleb Stokes, 28, 22 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists, filling up that stat line. They're going to finish out the season against Evangel on Saturday. Southwestern, they took care of McPherson, 103-68. Uh, Kevin Clark, 23 points. And then uh, Damon Gatewood, he had 14 points, 3 rebounds. Damari Gatewood, I apologize. So they go to 22-4, and four, and they're going to finish up against Bethany on Saturday. Uh, a couple other games, Ottawa won, uh, St. Mary beat Bethany, uh, Kansas Wesleyan beat Tabor, uh, York won, and Bethel won. Let's take a look at the standings. Not a lot of drama left in the KCAC. Oklahoma Wesleyan obviously has won the conference. Uh, we to see Bethel and York both play on Saturday. We'll have to see who is the... You know, more than likely it will be Bethel's the way it looks, uh, but we'll have to see. It, it could still be either one of those teams as the final playoff team. In the uh, WAC conference, Lords Lords got back on the winning ways. Uh, they beat Rochester 87-70. Sean Monroe he had 18 points, and Joey Hollifield 20.6 rebounds. Lords goes to 20 and five. And they're going to finish the season against Clary on Saturday. Uh, Madonna, uh, Isaac Anderson, another 30-point-plus night. Uh, They beat Clary 89-76. And Brendan Young, I'm sorry, Brandon Young, uh, 18.7 rebounds. Madonna's 23-4. They finish out against Lawrence Tech. A couple other games. Uh, uh, Michigan-Dearborn won. Cornerstone beats Aquinas. That was a big win for them. Lawrence Tech wins, and Indiana Tech wins as well. So going to the standings here, there's still a little bit of a mess here. If you can see where I'm pointing, Lawrence, Cornerstone, Indiana Tech, they're all within a game here. Uh, It looks to me, just by who they're playing and everything, I think Indiana Tech's going to hold on to that four spot, and I'm thinking that Siena Heights is going to hang on to that eight spot 
uh, but we'll have to play the games to find out. In the Chicago land, Roosevelt wins again. They beat Judson 90 to 71. Forte Prater, 16 points, six assists. Maurice Commander, best name in the NAI. Uh, he had 15 points. Roosevelt goes to 23 and three, and they're going to play Indiana Northwest Saturday. Rest of the Chicago land, all about Nazarene. They get the win over Indiana South Bend. St. Xavier beats St. Ambrose. St. Francis beats Calumet. Trinity Christian wins. Indiana Northwest beats Governors. And let's go to the standings in there. Uh, so obviously Roosevelt's going to win the conference. Uh, the, the top four are already set. Uh, again, the only drama here is who's going to be the, the last playoff team. So Calumet and St. Francis are both in action on Saturday and somebody's going to end up with the eight spot, but that's really the only thing left to decide in the Chicago land. Great Plains conference. God, it was crazy tonight. So Northwest, they beat Morningside big win for North Northwestern, big win for Northwestern. Uh, they beat them 90, uh, 81 Dylan Carlson, 21 points and Craig Sterk, 23 points, eight rebounds. Northwestern goes to 21 and six and they're going to host Dort on Saturday. And then this was a crazy game. So Concordia goes to overtime and beats Hastings. Uh, Hastings uh, had them beat. Uh, I think, I mean, Concordia was way down early in the second half. I think close to 20. And they were down by 10 with six minutes to go. Somehow they came back and tied it up. I don't even know how, really. I, had to, I went away from the game for a while. Anyway, Concordia gets the win. That's what's important. Noah Shutt, a 19.18 rebound double-double. When Noah Shutt gets a double-double, he makes it count. Hey, the freshman Brooks Kissinger, 14.7 rebounds. Concordia is 21-6, and six, and they're going to play Midland on Saturday. A couple other quick games. Um, Midland beat Mount Marty. Jamestown, they're playing a lot better. They, they really come on. Uh, they win against Briarcliff, and then Dort beats Dakota Wesleyan in the Corn Palace. Okay, so this is this is where get your abacus out. So Concordia, Northwestern, and Hastings are all fourteen and five. Morningside's a whole game back at number four. Uh, somebody's going to win this conference. So Midland is going to play at Concordia. Dort's going to have to go to Northwestern. Yeah, that's right. And Hastings has to go to Doan. If I had to guess, I'm kind of guessing all three of those teams will win. Concordia, Northwestern, and Hastings. And then we're going to have a 15-5 and five log jam. And then the uh, fathers of the conference can uh, get out their, their calculators and figure it out. But trust me, they've got, they've got a system and somebody's going to win the conference. But... Uh, these three teams have got to win, Northwestern, Hastings, and Concordia. And if one of them slips up, it's going to help the other two. In the heart of America, uh, Mid-American Nazarene wins again. They beat Central Methodist 94-89. Ed Wright, 34 points. Anthony Brown, 23 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists. They go to 23-4, and four, and they're going to wrap up against William Penn. And tomorrow, uh, tomorrow we're going to have uh, Caleb Jones McCrary from Mid American Nazarene. So tune in for that. In in the other games in the conference, Park beat Missouri Valley. They needed that win. To, they they got a chance to get in the playoffs now. Baker wins. Benedictine wins. Graceland beat a uh, Culver Stockton. William Penn beat Clark. Go to the standings. So uh, the top four are set. You can see that, and then. The bottom four set, with the exception of Park and Missouri Valley. As I said, Park beat Missouri Valley. Park was down a game. They were able to tie it up. So Missouri Valley has to play Grandview, and Culver Stockton has to go to Park. So, again, just like the other conferences, somebody's going to get that eighth and final spot. We'll find out Saturday who it is. <clears throat> Congratulations uh, to Coach Crary and uh, to the St. Thomas Bobcats. Sun Conference champions. Uh, I know that they struggled early. Uh, the naysayers kind of all came out. 
uh, said maybe Coach Crary got ahead of himself a little bit. I might have actually said it once or twice. But uh, performance trumps everything, and the, uh, the Bobcats win the conference, and congratulations are definitely in order. They really came on in the second half of the season. So tonight in the Sun Conference, uh, St. Thomas beat Kaiser. Florida Memorial beat Southeastern. Uh, Warner beat Coastal Georgia. Ave Maria desperately needed a win, and they got it against uh, Weber International. So the, remember now, these top two teams in the Sun Conference, they they get a bye in the playoffs. And then the bottom four play the first round. So Florida Memorial, Ave Maria, and Kaiser are all 8-5. and five. Starting to see a theme here. So Florida Memorial and Kaiser play each other. Ave Maria plays Coastal Georgia. So those are the games right there that you want to watch in the Sun Conference. In the North Star, they've already started their playoffs. Uh, Bellevue is the number one seed. They they get a bye. I'll try to make it just a little. Bellevue gets a bye. So Dakota State played number five Viterbo. Uh, Dakota State Dakota State won that game, eighty five sixty one. So they will play Bellevue on Sunday. Dakota Dakota State and Bellevue will play on Sunday. Waldorf Dickinson State the number six seed uh, upset Waldorf. Uh, what was the score of that game? 77-67, and then uh, May Mayville State beat Valley City State, uh, 82-68. So Mayville State and Dickinson State will play the second half of the semifinal. So Bellevue is going to play uh, Dakota State, and Dickinson State will play Mayville. This is all on Sunday for the North Star. Uh, in the... Uh, Appalachian Conference, it's been a dogfight, but I think it's about done. Columbia International wins, Milligan wins, Pikeville wins, and Union wins. Okay, so that's the main thing right there. And Pikeville's done. They've played their 24 games, and they've got four losses. Uh, Union has one game left, and they're going to play Kentucky Christian right here. I hate to say it for the Pikeville fans, but I'm sorry, Bears. The Union's not going to lose to Kentucky Christian. Uh, you know, it, it's it's not etched in stone, but it looks like Union's going to win another AAC title and will hold off to congratulations. Hey, that's what went on tonight, uh, last night. A uh, lot of games. Really appreciate uh, you sticking with and trying to go through this, but the, the payoff is coming. I mean, we're just days away from conference tournaments. Uh, get out and support your teams. Get to those conference tournament games. They're great basketball, and it's the best entertainment value in America. Thank you very much for supporting our podcast. Please like and subscribe. Get out to your local NAI school because NAI basketball is the best entertainment value in America.